What is good, Foundation Nation? So before we jump into the practice round that you're here to watch, um, I just wanted to announce really quickly that these shirts here, the Supreme Flight Tee, uh, is officially dropped on our site. You've probably seen, I know you've seen me wear it in a video, Trevor might have worn it, and Brody and Paul have them. I don't know if they've worn them in post or anything like that yet. But regardless, it's now live on our site. The link's in the description below if you wanna check it out. But now let's jump over to the course and get the practice round started. All right, so we are out here at Thorn Spring Golf Course and Event Center where the tournament is happening. When you're watching this, if you watch it today, it dropped tomorrow. Um, tomorrow there's supposed to be a lot of rain and it's probably gonna be nothing like this. But yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and start out on hole one and then um, just kind of check in, give you updates on what's going through my head as I play through my practice round to prepare for my first event of 2020, which is gonna be interesting. Go for it. So the T sign was confusing. Thought I was going up the left side, but it turns out I'm going up the right side. So I definitely would have thrown a more stable one and been more up left, ideally. But I'm still going to play the shot from here. Um, the one from over there looks like it's a lot more straightforward, just straight shot. So this one, if I'm in this position, I'm just going for the par. I did something solid. <laughs> nice. Was that hole one? Who knows? May or may not have been hole one. So apparently I played the hole two's basket that you just saw right there. No idea where hole two's T is. Apparently it's somewhere back there. So that basket I was actually next to on one that could have jumped putted up was hole one's basket that we thought certainly wasn't. Um, so hole one actually now in my head is an easy birdie. And hole two looked like a sh just straightforward par three. Hole three here, just straight up the hill, par four. There's like some OB green on the left and an OB green by the basket. And I believe this cart path and beyond is also OB. So I'm gonna have two different shots, one a little bit more aggressive with a thrasher, see what I can get up there. And the other one a little bit more safe with a, a Zeus just kind of playing straight. that a little bit. So this is probably the one I'll end up going with because there's just a lot a lot more safety left. Yeah, that's a lot better. It's a putter, right? Has to be a putter. It seems like a putter. Dip. That's susceptibly uphill though. I'll try the banger first. Okay. You're gonna have to give it a good move probably. Yeah, it's more a place to I'm gonna go soft buzz, actually. Yeah, probably a good idea. That looks a lot better. That's a good yeah, shot. That was a lot easier. Ooh. Tournament day, make sure to warm up the putty. That could be crucial. I'd say. Hole four, uh, plays straight down. There's a gully that runs across. It's gonna play OB. And then the green is kind of beyond that and to the left. 790 foot par four. Um, it's so drastically downhill that the shot across that little gully looks doable. So I'm gonna try that first to kind of gauge the distance with my thrasher um, and see how hard I have to throw it to get it across. 
Um, if it seems like I have to hit it pretty hard, then I'm gonna try one of these more overstable discs. Just kind of smooth, flat out there. Let it crash left uh, down in the fairway in the middle here, and then throw a hyzer second shot over to the to the green. Um, but yeah, that's the game plan. Just gotta wait for these people to clear off the hole and give it a rip. I didn't flip Zeus. up as much as I thought. I'm gonna try the Zeus flat and see what that does. A little bit lower. There you go. Yeah, that one's for sure across. It's not even worth throwing another shot. That's what I'm going with. So this is pretty much ideal. Um, most likely in the tournament, we'll play it a little bit more right just to be safe um, but if you're crashing these trees it should be pretty easy up and down you do have to hit it kind of hard the crasher didn't quite clear it was a uh, short on the other side there um, so I'm definitely gonna go Zeus I just got a match the angle of the hill I think was the key mistake I made with the crasher I got it two nose up and it just stalled and came backwards Pretty simple. Mm. As of right now, this isn't good. That's not good. There you go. Oh boy. Probably quit while you're ahead. Alright, so hole five. 366 foot par three, just right on the other side of those trees there. Wide open hyzer gap. Um, I'm gonna try it with an onyx first. It seems like the shot brought the mantis if I want a little less disc. So we'll see. I actually wanna try the mantis going a little bit more straight at it low and let that kinda try that line. There it is. Yeah, I think that shot is it. It's just, do I want to do that line with my onyx or with my man? Hundred seventy foot hole six, par three, pretty much straight ahead, but really well protected. I'm thinking I'm gonna try a tee from this left side here, and go. I'll try one bigger hyzer, give it a little bit more height, let it crash in, and then one more low skip shot and see if either of those work. Oh, you're gonna take it all the way around the right. Yeah. Okay. Now nah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm going predator both times. Smart. We'll find out when it comes down. Nuko has to pump it out there, get a little bit further before it skips. There it is. Is it going to skip off that grass? Yeah. Alright, we'll see where that ends up. That's very safe. You just don't get it, do you? Alright. I think that should be ideal. Skip angle. The green is literally surrounded. You see the green down there. So he's got path on the right, water on the left. I'm going buzz. Just kind of a little bit right of it. No, that's cowardly. Try to give myself a putt. Get your arm out. Alright. Yeah, that's a lot shorter than I thought. I got one more. Buzz away. 
hopefully I'm going to start this significantly right. Oh no. Yeah, that's not good. Splash! <laughs> She's gone. Disc has been retrieved. So not a lot of trouble behind it. This is another pretty, I mean this green's a little scary, but this is another not too hard to get par for. There it is. Now don't throw the. There you go. Make the putt and then pick up that mid range. Don't throw it. <laughs> Pull eight, par four. Looks like it's going to be around this grouping of trees up here. Um, sorry for the wind out here. You get still the course itself. So I'm going to just try to go thrasher. It looks like the only OB's left, so I'm going to try to just lay it like out here and let it cruise to the right. Um, hopefully, I have a good angle for my second shot. I definitely want to be more left. I want to be more at the bottom of this hill. Have a better angle up. But I'm going to practice from here anyways. Try to throw a ball as low as the right Can't just see the corner of the basket there. It's, it's pretty guarded when you're up here on the top of the hill. Going with the buzz, give me a little more glide. The putter distance, but with the height I have to put on it. I want to go with the mid. And that's way too much hyzer. Thank you, true. I just want to be left of that tree. Left of that tree, right. wide open for it. This is like a worst case scenario, and you still got a putt. That's what I'm saying is whoever is the guy who makes a bunch of those putts that you just blade in the air ball <laughs> is going to win out here. Hole nine, bottom of this hill, a little on the left side. Forehand is kind of attractive here, but the backhand's wide open. So I'm going backhand buzz. See if we can get it close. I need to get a lot more left. Mm -hmm. Put this one more angle, softer and higher. That one's still. Actually, that one looks nah, good. Nah, it looks good. That could be that really good. good. Yeah. That one's good. That one's good. So this first one, not so great. Second one's hard. Special bend blend buzz is going to be the move. Hold in, 250 feet, just straight up the hill. It's really far uphill, so I'm going to go Predator on a higher hyzer. I'm going to just crash in. Um, I think this is going to play better than trying to get a mid or something. That's about it, that really. That seems fine, yeah. I don't think there's a reason to throw anything else. Not nice. Got to figure that out. I guess. First one looked good. So hole 11 is the toughest hole here, I think, yet. We have these two mandos off the tee about 150 feet. Probably about 100 feet past that, there's a bunker that's OB. And then about 50 feet past that, there's a green OB. And then the basket. So what I'm thinking is go putter off the tee and then try to get set up a driver forehand second shot. Um, so I'm gonna go with the banger first shot and just try to get it through this mando and see where I'm at relative to the bunker and then see if I wanna go mid instead because that's always an option as well. It would help if I made the mando. That's pretty much what you need Kinda to do. Scary. You want something less stable? Yeah, I'm gonna just go soul, power down on it, and try to throw it straight. All right. Like, I feel like that's much more doable. And then go bigger off the second shot. Well, I mean, we'll see what that second shot looks like. That's about right. It's right distance, not the right line. Yeah, a little more stability. Are 
we go. which with the wind up the hill, it's a low percentage putt. Second one landed a little bit better, more on line, about 30 feet short, much higher percentage make. There it is. More of that, please. All right, so hole 12 seems like pretty straightforward. Straight, long, 710 feet. Just told don't go left, so go with the flippier option in the thrasher. Try to get it down there. Seems good, but I have I no idea what it looks like down there. I look like a crush. Ends a little bit on the left side of the fairway, a lot of OB danger on the left. So I'm gonna go forehand, it's a headwind, and just try to you know, hit near the basket and skip a little right. Or, be a sissy, throw it straight at the basket. It's way right. Yeah, that's, not, that's not good. Show them back. There you go. Or better, but not even good. That's, that's not bad. That's fine. All right, hole 13, pretty much straight uphill, just straight ahead of us. Only thing it looks like there's some OB right over there. Uh, that green somewhere, I can't exactly see it. Um, I don't think it's oh, really I think play. it's more right than it looks. Yeah. So, just gonna throw a mantis pretty much straight at it and let it kind of do its thing. All right, it's too short. Is it? Yeah. I'm gonna go one step more with the flash. That's pulled over, way over. Yikes. That is horrendous. We'll go one more shot. Some more highs are on it. That flipped up on me too. Sheesh. I think it's the Mantis. I think there's a more headwind up there than I think. That just seems short to me. Mm. We'll see when we get up there, but that looks like 50 short. Oh. So on that last hole, I should have went onyx once I got up there. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do in the tournament, just throw the onyx, be much more straightforward. This hole, hole 14, 645 feet downhill. Basket is over the green to the left a little bit. Um, actually, it looks like it might be just straight off the tee. I'm thinking I'm going to go Nuke OS flat. There's OB left, so I'm going to try to go flat out to the right and let it crash, hopefully shy of the green, and then give myself a little forehand upshot with the mid. And then we're going to try a little bit more aggressive with an overstable Zeus on Heiser and see if that gives me any advantage worth risking it for. I want to get further left though. Oh, there's a good skip. So like that, I can't reach the green with the Nuke OS. So I'm gonna try this overstable Zeus and see if it puts the green into play at all. And that yanked it. But I did get a hold of it, so that'll at least give me a good distance gauge. Did it make the green? It's close. We'll see when we get down there. So my Zeus is in play and is in a good spot, just shy of the green, which is a good news because it means I can't really reach the green, but I think I'd rather go Nuke OS. It gives me more space to the left to mess up. There's no danger back here, and I can still see the basket. It doesn't look like that hard of a shot. So if I get a hold of this flat, I can get it probably like 50 more feet and down there to the left, which is gonna let me see the whole basket. And I just think that's a, a smarter shot. Um, because realistically, Throwing this forehand, there shouldn't be that much of a difference between 100 feet, um, and then that just takes the green completely out of play. Didn't get the skip I expected. I'm gonna throw one more. 
A little more height and angle, probably. There you go. That red predator seems to have a little more glide, too. Yeah. Too. It stays in the air more. About 35, 40 out. There you go. It's a bird. Red one got a little bit closer. There's honestly a lot of space to land in back here. It's not tucked on the green as much as we thought. Oh. So this is the first like super short uh, par three. Seems like you kind of just want to be throwing a hyzer, beating that last tree, letting it cruise in. So I'm gonna go with the color shift banger right of that tree and let it crash down in there. Or mess up. Good news is it's an all day three. <laughs> you can't really do worse than a three on this hole. Watch me try. I still wasn't quite my line, but that's the idea. Keep it wide. You have a lot of room to push. I think push I'm going to go a little more left. Okay. you got a lot of room to push it wide, so use it. Yeah. There it is. I was just running up wrong. I was okay. running up from the right side of the tee, lined up at the basket. I should have been running up. Line up the left side of the tee, just lined up this way. Yeah. So you can see the difference. This disc did not beat that tree he was looking for, and it left him about 25 or so. And then the one that did, that last throw, is a lot closer, slid right past the basket. So the easy, easiest shot on this, this whole 16, par four, easiest shot I think is a forehand. Um, it's on hyzer, get it out, skip it over there. I'm gonna try something a little more aggressive to the backhand. I don't know, backhand roller, sorry. I don't know if it's gonna be worth it. You almost gotta hug it around that last tree on the right because the ceiling is a little bit more generous there. Yeah. Mm. I just don't know if it's gonna, I have one more disc I can do it with. I don't think it's gonna be worth it. I think the forehand's just too easy not to do. It might, it may just be the case, yeah. Oh. Yeah, no. I also don't have a flippy enough. Yeah, I don't think you have the right disc, but I think that could be. So I'm gonna just go money. forehand here. I think it's too easy. Oh yeah, it shouldn't be hard. Like that should be able to be a birdie. All day. <coughs> oh boy. That should be easy up and down there. Yeah, this course is pretty easy. All right, so this left him about 200 up the hill. And he pulled it right. And he yanked it right. You got the Never yank. Changed. Got a little problem with that. The putters. There you go. And that's what you want. Hmm. And there it is. Hole 17 out here. Uh, par 4, 535 feet. Looks like the initial shot is pretty straightforward, and the second shot is going to be a little bit more difficult with the lower ceiling. So there's a mando way out there. I'm gonna try to push this kind of at the mando and let it hyzer left of it. Um, and then have either a forehand or a tunnel backhand depending on where I land up to the basket. That looked pretty good. That's about all I want, right? Yeah. It's not bad. I'll go one more shot. See if I can get the ringer there. I think I'd feel more comfortable for it. Yeah. Yeah, that works. That's where the first buzz shot landed. About 30 feet or so. Ringer landed about 15 feet or so. Hole 18 out here, starting to rain, just in time for us to get home. Um, 359 feet downhill, the basket's on this like slant, slant, that's the word, slant down there. Um, so definitely calls for a forehand. Um, they're putting out, so I'm gonna give you my thoughts on this real fast. Now that I've seen the whole course, I feel confident that I can shoot well. It's all gonna come down to my putting. The issue that I'm gonna see is even though there's a lot of par fours and stuff, it's birdie or die out here. So if you get in a par streak, 
it's not a good sign. Um, it's gonna take double digits both rounds, I would guess, to compete. Um, the highest rated player is like 977 coming into this, so I'm not expecting anything criminal, but I mean, I know myself in my current state, if I was on, could shoot like 14, but I could also shoot like two. So <laughs> there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of easy birdies out there, but still some room to mess up. Um, so yeah, let's see if we can't just park this and then wrap up the video. Take the basket off its hinges. Oh, way short. Oh no. Nah, she'll come back. Will she? She'll come back in that tree. Alright, one more shot. One more oh, I didn't realize the tree was over there. That's the honey that's shooting two down out here. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this practice round. Hopefully you enjoyed um, watching how I prepare for a tournament. I know I'm not the highest rated player or anything like that, but a lot of you guys wanted me to walk you through. And hopefully, you know, since I'm not a high rated player, I'm about 960-ish, and kind of gave you some good uh, insights since we've done practice rounds with high rated players, what the difference is kind of through my thinking and their thinking. Um, hopefully that's kind of a cool little comparison for you guys to see, but I wanted to break the video down here um, back at our warehouse location because what ended up happening is this hurricane's coming through, as I'm sure you know, um, and you know it's already hit the United States a little bit, but on Saturday, tomorrow, it is going to be the outskirts of it is going to be bringing some thunderstorms and rain and stuff like that to Virginia, um, and so the first round of the tournament has already been canceled, and it's just going to be a one-round tournament and they're gonna evaluate the course to see if they can even use golf carts out there tomorrow, if the course conditions are gonna be good enough, um, which is, it's the right decision made by the TD, but at the same time, I'm about two hours, a little bit over two hours away from the course, and that's just a long way to drive for a one round tournament. So uh, unfortunately, I've dropped out of the event, as have you know some other people in this area and some other of my friends that were coming from West Virginia. It's just an unfortunate, um, circumstance that no one can really control um again it was the right choice made by the td and all of that but i wanted to throw that in at the end of this video i still wanted to release the practice round because i felt like it was good content for you guys to kind of see um but at the same time i'm upset that i'm not able to play tomorrow i could drive out there for one round it's just my choice that i just i don't think it's going to be worth it um you know it's a long ways four hours of driving in one day to play one round of disc golf and um it's just something that, you know, it's unfortunate, like I said, but I wanted to go ahead and clar clarify that in case you were looking at the PDGA page to see how I did or anything like that. You're not going to find me there. So uh, thanks to Alex Bush and the rest of the staff that are putting this event on. Um, like I said, you guys made the right choice and the course was great. It was a lot of fun to play. I really wish, you know, I could have played it. Hopefully next year you guys run this event again and I'll be out there stoked to support the event and play it. But yeah, like I said, for this year, um, just not going to make it out there tomorrow. So thanks again for watching guys. Check the links in the description below to all of our links, social media website. Uh, if you wanted to check out the flight shirts, they dropped on the website today. So you can check those out and pick yourself up one if you're interested in that. But other than that guys, we'll see you in the next one.